All right, guys, here we go. Another long video. In this one, we're going to do the engine, the interior, and the final assembly. So sit tight. Since I'm using the chassis from the Chevelle, I figured I might as well use the engine from the Chevelle. That way there'll be no fitment issues. There's really nothing special here. Just basic assembly as per the instructions. We're going to get everything in some sub-assembly so we can get it all ready for paint. As you'll see here, I got the oil filter masked off because I want that to stay white. I'm a fan of Wix filters for my gas vehicles and fleet guard for my diesels. And they're all white. With the long block in its color, I moved on and I painted the heads, the timing cover, the intake, in just a flat aluminum color. I started to mask off the engine to paint the transmission, but then figured, hey, in the time it takes me to clean the airbrush, I could just paint this thing by hand. And I'm painting this Muncie transmission in some Tamiya metallic gray. I went with this color because it is still an aluminum case, but it's kind of old and worn and tarnished. It's got some miles on it. And with that dry, we could finally rip off the masking tape, or we could try to. I seem to be struggling here. I ended up having to bust out the big tweezers to get some grip on that. But there it is, guys. For the headers, I'm going to paint those in a dark aluminium. Back in my glory days of hot rodding, ceramic coating had just hit the scene and it was still in its infancy. After several thousand heat cycles, it just lost all of its shine and just became this dull, kind of gray color. And this looks the best that I could find to match that. The locating tab for that head, it, uh, it accidentally got sanded off. So I just used some of the slow setting glue just to give me time to position it. And that intake does look kind of funny, I admit. The Chevelle, it came with a tunnel ram intake. I didn't really like that look and I didn't want to have to cut the hood on the truck. So I just cut the rams down and just put a piece of for sale sign in there to bridge the gap. Once it's all assembled, it's going to be hidden underneath a carburetor and an air cleaner. You guys will never know. Well, I, I guess you guys will know since you just saw me do it. But for those people who are not privy to this build, they will not know. With this being a competition build of sorts, I wanted to go the extra mile. So I'm going to drill out the grommets on these valve covers so I could run some vacuum lines. It's probably going to just rub right off, but I'm going to try to add some Sharpie to those grommets just to give them that rubber look. So I'm going to wipe these fingerprints off before they stain it. Oh, hey, look, that Sharpie's still there. I was not expecting that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill out the corresponding holes for the vacuum lines on the carburetor. 
Now, I didn't show it, but I painted the carburetor silver, then I just went over it with a very light brush of gold. This gives it that, that kind of green... Uh, I don't know what color holly carburetors are, but it, it looks like a holly carburetor now. And again, since there's nothing to locate that, just some slow setting glue so I could position it. Eh, yeah, that looks close enough to center. And for the vacuum lines, I just used some solid core electrical wire. Offhand, I do not remember what gauge this is. I just had this spool for so long that I lost the package. So who knows what gauge it is. I also took the time to drill that hole right there for a distributor because we are going to run some plug wires on this thing. But first, we need to glue these headers in place so we know where to drill. Speaking of distributors, I still cannot get any Morgan Automotive Detail pre-wired distributors. So I got a hold of Joel at uh, Iceman Collections and got a couple of his 3D printed distributors. The holes for the plug wires are there, but I had to drill them a whole lot deeper than I'm just running my own wires. With all the wires in place, I put that clamp up on the distributor cap so I could paint the shaft silver. And now I'm touching up the distributor cap where the clamp rubbed all the paint off. I do apologize as I cut out 99% of routing all these wires. You guys have seen me do this on just about every V8 build I've done. You guys have seen other modelers do it. I have a tutorial on it, actually, if you guys want to go check that out. It's just rather time-consuming. I just put on some music, put my head down, and plow through it. And with that last plug wire in place, I'm just going to press all the wires down to give us a sense of gravity. These are solid core wires, so they will hold their shape. Whatever you bend it to, it will stay there until you bend it another way. I found some random air cleaner in the parts kit. I don't know what this came off of, but I am just painting the filter element part of it white. And it does have some rough spots on it. I'm kind of scared to sand down because of all the chrome and where they're at. But as long as we clock this so that's facing the firewall, nobody will know. And in the theory of keeping this video short and concise, I didn't record myself putting on those pulleys or the belts. You guys aren't missing much. They're slotted and they just slide right into place. I still need to wipe my fingerprints off the chrome, but other than that, this is it guys. That is our assembled boot block. So we are going to move on to the interior now. You guys may remember in the last video when I assembled the roll cage. It's finally time to put that to use. You guys looking at the dashboard, you may see that I had to fill some holes there. I had to re-drill so I could scoot the roll cage as far back as possible. Otherwise, those front bars, they were hitting the windshield. The next order of business was the seats here. These are the factory seats, and as you could tell, there is a little jog in the floor pan of the interior tub here. If I use the Chevelle seats, it's going to put these at a weird angle that just will not look right. The only thing I could come up with was modifying the seat to make it look right. I cut the base at an angle and then I had bent the seat back forwards. And if my verbal explanation isn't enough, well here, let me show you what I did. 
Whoever designed these seats were kind enough to give us some landmarks, so to speak. So I'm just going to cut from the very top angle all the way down to the very bottom angle. And with that piece cut off, I'm just going to sand the bottom of the rails together just so they're parallel with each other. Now I'm going to do a quick little sanity check real quick, just to make sure the fronts of the seats are sitting at the same height. That looks pretty good to me. So next up i got to bend the back of the seat as far forward as possible without it breaking. Now since I did not use any heat, this plastic still has a memory so it will spring back a little bit. Just a little bit of tweaking here and there until they match each other. Alright, what else can we modify? Yeah, I don't like this shifter. What can we do with this? Well, those of you who watch my videos already know. But first, we gotta get this thing located. Being that this was originally a four-wheel drive, this is actually the mode selector for the transfer case, which means it mounted offset on the side of the trans tunnel. Off camera, I drilled a hole as close to center as I could get with my eyeballs, so when we repurpose this as a shifter, it'll be where it's supposed to be. And that naturally, well, it's going to leave us with a hole to fill. So I'm just going to create a dam with some masking tape and burnish it down extremely well. And you guys may have guessed it by now, but yep, I'm just going to fill that hole with a little bit of some CA glue. I do not want to make a mess with this kicker, so I'm going to use the tube as a dropper just so I use as little as possible and get it exactly where I need it. And we didn't quite fill the hole all the way the first go, but that's okay. We can just keep doing this. This is easy. And after a few more goes at that, well, we have that hole filled. Back to the shifter. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go out of focus here and just cut the shift lever right off. And it's hard to see, but there is kind of a void, an empty spot, a casting right smack dab in the center where that shift lever was. So I'm just going to use that as a guide, and I'm going to drill a hole, because we got to make room for this sewing pin that I'm going to use to replace it with. Problem is, the head on that sewing pin was so big that I need to shave it down. The push pin itself was too small to fit in a chuck of my drill, so I just put it inside of a pin vise and I chucked that up in my drill. With my homemade lathe, I'm just going to shave down the head of that pin until it's small enough to look to scale. Back in my day, all the hot rods came equipped with her shifters and they all had white knobs. So I'm painting this one white. Since I can't get this stubborn chrome to strip off, I did the same thing I did with the grill and the bumper. I just paint it with some primer, and I'm going to go over it with some Tamiya rubber black. Or tire black. I forget what they call that stuff. Now with all that paint dry, it's finally time to put that sewing needle to use. Being a truck, I had to leave this thing a little bit extra long. And I'm not kidding either, guys. I was just behind the wheel of a 2023 Cummins, and that shift lever was every bit of three feet long. It makes sense, though. You sit higher in a truck, so you need a longer shifter. All right, so I'm going to set that aside, and we're going to move on to the dashboard. Now, either I had drilled that hole out larger for some reason back in the day, or I have the wrong steering wheel. So I went back and rummaged around the parts bin. I found some steering columns that I have no idea what it goes to. So I drilled out the back of that and I put a piece of sprue into it to act as a steering shaft. 
And I don't know if I just got lucky, but that little angle at the top, it helps this thing fit this dash perfectly. With the steering column sorted, that only leaves us to track down a steering wheel. Luckily, we just had one in our hands, so I'm going to cut the steering shaft off and just reuse this one. And man, that is a gnarly cut. I might have to start a Patreon just so I could start buying some good tools. So I guess I got some more sanding to do to clean that cut up. Once it's good and flat, I'm just going to drill a hole as close to center as I can, just so we got a way to mount this thing. Just need to drill that a little bit deeper and we are there. And I do admit it's weird how well the steering column matches up to the hub on the steering wheel. Science time. Right behind me is our laundry room and the washer is running and it's just putting out a ton of humidity in the air. It's reacting with the alcohol in this cup and it's making it frost up on the outside. That's enough of Bill Nye the science guy. It's time to get back to Mitchell the modeler. That can't be right. That doesn't rhyme. Anything out there rhyme with Mitch that you guys know of? Let me know in the comments. This is all going to be painted the same color, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue this steering wheel in place now and get it clocked where it's in the right spot. There we go, nice and straight. For the roll cage, I'm going to be using some semi matte aluminium metalizer. And just like the headers, this is going to give us a shade of metal, but not too shiny. And what we're going for here is a galvanized steel look. And guys, yes, I do know in real life, when they welded this thing together, all that stuff would have burnt off and just turned into lung cancer. But this isn't the real world we're living in. This is all make-believe. So we're using that aluminium to paint just the seat brackets, the bottoms of them. Then once that's dry, I'm going to mask it off because we're going to paint everything in flat black now.
With all the black done, I went in and I painted the gauges themselves white and the needles in orange. On the little gauges, little drops of white paint just filled in all the detail. Oh well, these things happen, and once it's assembled, nobody will see those. So I'm just going to treat it like every other problem in my life. I'm going to ignore it, and eventually I'll forget about it, or it'll go away. So I'm going to be using that slow setting glue again because I want some time to position these seats right where I want them to go. So first I'm just going to get that thing straight, then I'm going to drop in the roll cage, then I'm going to push it as far back as it'll go. Now we just repeat for the other side and move on to putting the dash together. Now since we took the time to get all this lined up a few segments ago, this just drops into place. Oh, and you guys may or may not have noticed, but uh, I also did some silver painting on the trim and the bezel around the gauges. I just needed to break up all that black in there. I'm also noticing there is not a lot of leg room under that steering wheel. That's it for the interior though guys. Remember, race car, stripped down. There's just not a lot to it. With the interior done, we can set that off to the side and completely change direction. Because now we're going to get the last little details of the chassis assembled and we could finally sandwich all this together. What I'm doing now is I'm going through a couple of the parts bins because I do not have a drive shaft. I must have already used them in both of the Chevelle kits and just never found the sprue that has the truck drive shaft. I got a lot of stuff in here. There's a Porsche 918 chassis, a Viper chassis, a fully assembled Viper engine. Yeah, better get that out of there quick. Last thing I need is YouTube trying to tell me I'm inciting violence and banning my channel. Oh, look at this. I completely painted and cleared up Audi R8 body. Wait, can it be? It is a drive shaft. We found one, guys. We did it. Score. And of course it doesn't fit, because that would be too easy. This thing was only about 10 millimeters too short, so I'm just going to cut it and splice in a piece of this styrene rod. So I'm going to cut it right at the bevel here. So I got my piece spliced in, and we are exactly where I want this thing to be. So now I'm just going to get that thing a little bit more straight, and I'm going to clean up that seam, and then sand back in the factory bevel. Believe it or not though guys, on a solid one piece drive shaft, they have to be tapered. Now I'm no scientist, but from my understanding, having a distal taper on a drive shaft just helps it maintain more balance when it's spinning. So with that thing finally glued together and everything nice and straight, I just painted it some semi-gloss black, masked it up, and I painted the yokes in aluminium color. So 
With that thing the proper length, we could finally start gluing in the drivetrain. Since I'm using the Chevelle engine with the Chevelle chassis, this thing just located right and popped into place. I've used these chassis a lot, and I know that with the way the transmission and headers have to swing into place, that the transmission cross member is one of the last things we install. That is it for all the sub-assemblies though guys, we're about to wrap this thing up. And now all we gotta do is just sandwich it all together. This is where things start to get fun. The body will not spread wide enough to let it simply drop in the interior tub. With all my test fitting, I found one method that actually just might work. So what I found works the best is I drop the roll cage into place, then I slide the interior tub over it, then I flip the whole body over and just hope it falls into place. And of course, now that I'm doing this with the camera on, I'm getting caught and snagged on everything. It took some doing, but I finally got those down tubes lined up with the holes that we had drilled into the dash. Now once we got all those lined up, well, we can just push this thing into home. I'm going to give this thing a quick once over just to make sure the roll cage is straight and level. And it's looking pretty good. Now the wheels are usually something that I install towards the end of the build and I usually do that just so I have room to get my fingers up into the wheel wheels so I could pry out the body to make installing the chassis a little bit easier but since these wheels and tires actually tuck up into the body I gotta install them now. But first it has to pass a level test. All four tires are touching the ground and there is no wobble. And since we spent so much time on part two, making sure this thing fits the body, it just falls into place. No problems, no fuss, it just fits. Since I shaved the core support nice and smooth, I don't have a decent way to mount the radiator. So my goal here is to hold the body just right so gravity will kind of keep that thing in place so I can get it positioned and glued in. I went back out to that parts bin to look for an upper radiator hose and that's when I found this radiator and fan assembly from the Dodge Viper. 
The only thing I really did here was cut bevels at the bottom and drill a hole up here for this radiator hose to slip into. Now thanks to those bevels, this thing will just auto-locate itself right between the frame rails. I forgot to record it and I'm sorry, but as you guys can kind of barely see here, I got that radiator hose put into place. These things were extremely fiddly, so I wanted to install them towards the end. This is kind of like the mirrors. I know I'm going to be doing a lot of handling, so I installed them last, just so there's less chance to break them off. That is it though guys. With that hood in place, I present to you the finished build. So at the time of this posting, this has been in the judge's hands for about four days now. It's not looking good. That's okay, because I had a total blast in building this thing. This was fun. That is it for this build, though, guys. We are done. Have a good night.